Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video I wanted to talk about binoculars. Uh, as you can probably see behind me, there's a lot to choose from. Different sizes, different shapes, different features. Uh, it can be pretty daunting trying to find the right binocular for you. Uh, so I'll go through a couple of the different features and what each size might be good for, or maybe not so good for. Uh, and then hopefully at the end it'll help you make a decision as to which binocular might be best for you. Alright, let's get started. So the first things I wanted to talk about are the specs of the binoculars, what the numbers mean, what the different features are. So let's just take one for example. This is an 8x42 binocular. Now what does that mean? 8x42. The, the 8 is the magnification, so that's how many times it makes things appear larger. So if your eyes are one power, this makes everything appear 8 times bigger than your eyes. The second number, the 42, refers to the size of the lens in front. The bigger the lens, the more light it lets in. Now I've heard a lot of people say, oh, well that second number refers to the field of view. It actually has nothing to do with the field of view. It's only how much light it lets in. And as a corollary, the bigger the lens, the heavier the binocular is going to be. So this 8x42 is fairly light, but this 80 millimeter binocular is fairly heavy. Uh, next is the field of view. Uh, that will be somewhere else on the binocular because you can have two different 8x42s with two completely different fields of view based on the design of the eyepiece. So in this case, this is 8.2 degree field of view. That means I'm seeing a slice of the pie 8.2 degrees out. If this is 180 degrees, I'm seeing 8.2 degrees. Wide angle is usually considered 7 or more degrees. Standard fields of view for something like a 10 by 50 might be 5 to 7 degrees. As the magnification goes up, the field of view will go down. So this 20 by 80 has a much narrower field of view than this 8 by 42 because you're zooming in 20 times instead of 8 and you're seeing smaller objects up close. Uh, next, uh, the eye relief. Uh, all these binoculars have a certain eye relief. That's the vertical distance to where your eye is supposed to sit. If you're wearing glasses, you're physically, physically constrained. You can't get very close because your glasses are in the way. So you want something with a long eye relief. With these, the, this cup rotates up and down. Your eye is supposed to sit right there on the edge. So with glasses, I rotate these down. Your glasses sit against there, and your eye is up at the appropriate distance. Long eye relief is considered usually anywhere uh, above 13 to 15 millimeter eye relief. So if you're wearing glasses, I'd suggest not looking at any binocular that has a eye relief smaller of 13 to 15 millimeters. Uh, lastly, there's the coatings on the lenses. Uh, this one is fully multi-coated. That means every single air-to-glass surface is coated multiple times with an anti-reflective coating. Uh, you can probably see some reflections off this uh, glass here. Well, this is not coated. So just imagine what happens uh, in the binocular. Every time light hits a surface, some of it's going to bounce back off, like it does in the window here, and you lose some brightness. And there's a lot of pieces of glass in there, so at the end, a, a, a binocular with fairly poor coatings can be fairly dim. So the best coatings are fully multi-coated. You'll see things like multi-coated is maybe the next notch down, then fully coated. That means the, the binoculars are coated maybe one time on each lens surface. Uh, but fully multi-coatings are by far the best uh, coatings to look for. All right, now let's talk about specific binoculars and what they're good for. All right, so here we have a small compact binocular. This is an 8x25. Um, the, the, the compact nature really just, again, refers to the size of the lens. So usually compact binoculars are anywhere smaller than 30 millimeter lens size. So 8x25, you'll see 10x25s as well. That's just a little bit higher magnification, but in the same size. These are great for hiking around where you don't want to carry a lot of weight, like a large one there, and in daylight conditions. Remember, the size of the lens affects how much light it lets in, so these will not be as good as something bigger after the sun goes down, when you're in the forest or when you're using them for astronomy. But for daytime conditions, when there's already a lot of light to work with, these are excellent choices. They're, they're small, they fit in your pocket or your purse, and they can go anywhere with you. So again, a compact binocular for daytime viewing. All right, and here we have an 8x42. Now, this is kind of the breadwinner in the binocular line. 8x42 is very general purpose. It works well for pretty much everything. It lets in a lot more light than the compact one does. So in lower light conditions, as the sun is starting to set, or if you're in the shadows and the trees, uh, this pulls in a lot more light. It's also not too heavy either. 42 is still bigger, but not big enough to require a tripod. So this is either an 8x42 or a 10x42, 
is a very popular choice for birders or just general nature watching because it's kind of the all-in-one binocular. You can choose between an 8 or a 10 by 42 uh, based on the magnification. You might think that 10 is better than 8. Well, yes, it's higher power, but it's maybe not necessarily better. 10 will zoom you in a little closer, that's true, but your field of view is going to be narrower. So if you're trying to find a flock of birds that are all flying at once and you want to see them all at once, an 8 is going to be a little bit quicker and easier to capture them in the field of view and then see them all without having to move back and forth to see the one on this side and the one on that side. Also, the higher the magnification, the harder it is to hold steady. So if you're like me and you drink a lot of caffeine, you're going to see the image jitter around a lot with a 10. So I usually tend to stick with 8s because it's a more stable view. So here we have a 10 by 50. We're getting a little larger. Uh, in this size, they come usually in a 7 by 50 or a 10 by 50 size. They pull in more light than the 8 by 42 here. They're a little heavier. So if you're hiking around, you may not want to you may want not want to take the extra weight along with you. But they still work very well for daytime um, general purpose uh, viewing. The advantage is this is more dual purpose for astronomy. Remember, it pulls in more light because this is even bigger. So now you're starting to get into some good details of the, the night sky. Uh, a 10 by 50 is one of my favorites for handheld astronomy. It doesn't require a tripod because it's still fairly lightweight, unlike these big 20 by 80s, uh, but pulls in the light. So panning around the Milky Way is very nice. You can see the larger star clusters. Uh, the Andromeda galaxy is definitely visible with the 10 by 50. So this size is a very good dual purpose, daytime and night sky without requiring a tripod. All right, and finally we've got the big guns here. This is a very large 20 by 80 uh, binocular. So it lets in a lot of light, has a lot of magnification, 20 power. That's double the last one that we looked at. Now, this is excellent for high power terrestrial viewing. It's 20 power, so looking at the boats on the bay way out there or the hikers on the mountain, excellent. Um, and it pulls in a lot of light, so seeing those fainter deep sky objects, they come out in even more detail than the 10 by 50s do. So um, the Orion Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, brighter more detail with something like this. The only downside compared to a 10 by 50 is this is heavy, so it really requires a tripod. So you do have to carry a tripod with you uh, or have it wherever you're going to be observing from. Otherwise, it's just too much magnification. It shakes around a lot at 20 power, and your arms just get really tired trying to hold that steady. So as long as you don't mind having a tripod, this is a very good dual purpose, high power terrestrial view, and very excellent um, uh, uh, deep sky nebulae galaxy uh, view with the extra light. A lot of giant binoculars like our 20 by 80 absolutely require a tripod because they're very heavy. So in this case it's built in. There's a peer adapter here. just attaches onto your regular photo tripod. But a lot of the smaller ones, well they don't really need a tripod so it doesn't come with something and you can hand hold them. But there'll be many cases where you don't really want to hand hold them. You might want to put them on a tripod. So we've got a solution for that. Uh, most all binoculars have a tripod socket right in the middle here. And we sell this L bracket, which is designed to attach in, thread on to the center post, and then can be attached to any standard photo tripod because it uses the quarter 20 adapter uh, threads uh, here. So even a 10 by 50 you can attach on um, and not have to worry about the shake or the jitter. One last feature that you might want to look for on the binocular is uh, waterproofing. Now, for astronomy, that's, you're not going to need a waterproof because if it's raining, well, you won't be able to see the sky. But if you're out birding and you're a pretty hardcore birder and you want to go out when it's, when it's raining or at least when it's really misty or dewy, uh, waterproofing can be nice. Uh, definitely if it's raining, you want to keep the thing uh, sealed in a waterproof body. If it's just dewy or a little foggy, a water-resistant binocular, which most all of the binoculars uh, are, would be fine, but if it's actually raindrops coming down, keep it under an umbrella, or better yet, uh, choose a waterproof binocular. It's just safer in the long run if you're going to be birding in those types of conditions. All right, so there I've given you a, a general overview of what the different size binoculars uh, do and what the specs mean. Uh, this isn't, by, by all means, the, the only binoculars out there. Uh, there's variations in between. There's a 9 by 63 or a 15 by 63 in between these two. But they all just basically go for different magnifications, different weights, different light grasps. So hopefully with what I told you, you'll be able to more accurately choose the binocular that's going to work right for your specific needs. So I hope I've helped. Thank you very much and clear skies.